Hi, I'm Ben Atal, and I'm here to explain our work TURF, a novel view synthesis and reconstruction technique designed specifically for time-of-flight cameras. And if you're wondering where the name TURF comes from, it's a combination of the acronyms for time-of-flight and neural radiance fields. Novel view synthesis is a problem that has received a lot of renewed interest recently in both the computer vision and graphics communities. Given a set of images captured from different perspectives, the goal is to photorealistically render views of the scene from novel, unobserved camera poses. However, this problem becomes significantly more challenging for dynamic scenes. This is because we must disentangle image changes due to camera motion from changes due to object motion. There are generally two approaches to doing this. The first involves capturing many synchronized video streams of a scene from different viewpoints. While this produces great results, it also requires bulky imaging systems to capture the data. The second approach is to work with the data captured from accessible handheld cameras. However, this means that we must solve a more challenging reconstruction problem, which often requires making use of priors for the scene's geometry and object motion. In this work, we instead propose a third approach. Let's take advantage of depth sensors already available on mobile devices, including time of flight cameras. This information is typically ignored by recent novel view synthesis methods, in part because this depth can be unreliable. TURF gets around this issue by accurately modeling the way time of flight cameras capture depth information, and then uses this information to solve the dynamic novel view synthesis problem. Let's start with an overview of neural radiance fields, or NERF. Our task is to model the light emanating from a scene, starting with a single light ray, characterized by a position x and direction omega. A radiance field is a function that takes in these light ray parameters as input and outputs radiance, a measure of the amount of light traveling along this ray. A neural radiance field, or NERF, uses a neural network to perform this mapping. In addition to radiance, this network also outputs optical density, the measure of attenuation through a point in space. Given the pose of a camera, we can use this NERF to generate an image by following a few simple steps. For every pixel on our sensor, we trace a ray through the scene and evaluate the radiance observed along this ray. This requires integrating the contribution of light from every point on this ray. To do this, we first calculate the light emitted at a point, given by the product of radiance and density. We then scale this result by a transmittance term that describes the proportion of this light that will reach the camera. And finally, we repeat this procedure for all points along this ray and sum up their contributions. After repeating this procedure for all pixels in our camera, we obtain an image of our scene from our camera's perspective. This is a straightforward volume rendering technique, and through a few additional tweaks, it can even be used to synthesize images for unconventional cameras. For example, by replacing our radiance term with a distance term, the same integral can be used to render the scene's depth from the camera's perspective. In other words, this is an idealized image formation model for depth cameras. But is this representative of the type of measurements expected of real time-of-flight sensors? As you might have guessed, the answer is often no, and depth from time-of-flight cameras has errors. Here's the output from a continuous wave time-of-flight camera. Imaging dark objects that do not reflect much light results in noisy depth measurements. Specular surfaces reflect light from other areas of the scene, resulting in biased depth measurements. And large scenes may exceed the camera's unambiguous depth range, producing large depth errors. Using TURF, we can improve reconstruction quality and reduce these errors as shown below. To understand how we can achieve this, we need to explain two things. One, how to integrate time of flight into neural volume rendering, and two, how to understand time of flight depth errors with the concept of phasers, and why TURF can help overcome these errors. Let's start with a naive time delay model of time of flight imaging. A time of flight sensor measures the time it takes for a light signal to travel from a source, through the scene, and back to a camera. Given the speed of light, we can recover distances d. Let's integrate this into our image formation model within volume rendering. The modified image formation model is actually very similar to our conventional color volume rendering procedure. 
let's relate the two models here. There are three minor differences between typical volume rendering and time of flight volume rendering. First, because light is attenuated as it travels from a light source into the volume and out of the volume, the transmittance for a time of flight volume rendering is squared. We must also include a term to model the inverse square falloff of the time of flight light source. Volume density we assume to be the same. This lets us share reconstruction information between color and time of flight sensors. The second difference is that the measured light now depends upon reflected radiant intensity scattered from the scene. Third, the contribution of light depends on a path length importance function w, which in turn depends on the distance traveled. For pulsed time of flight, like LiDAR, w can be described by a one-hot vector that denotes the return time. A second kind of time of flight is continuous wave time of flight, where an amplitude modulated light source is correlated with the return signal. For continuous wave time of flight sensors, which we leverage in our work, the path length importance is a complex number or phasor due to this modulation. Most methods that work with time of flight cameras, however, do not explicitly model the summation or integration. Instead, they assume that the camera measures the integrand in the previous equation at the first intersected surface only. In this case, for continuous wave time of flight cameras, the measured phase is proportional to depth and amplitude to reflectance. Instead, TURF explicitly models the integral to help overcome the errors in the depth that we saw earlier. On to part two. Let's see why this assumption is problematic through the intuition provided by phasers and how TURF overcomes potential problems. A phasor is nothing more than a complex number, or equivalently, a vector on the two-dimensional plane. The angle of this vector represents our phase, which is used to recover depth, and the length of this vector represents amplitude, corresponding to the amount of light reflected at a scene point. As the object moves, the phase changes accordingly. The amplitude also decreases as the object moves further away, because less light is being reflected back to the camera. First, it's important to note that when a surface has low reflectance, the amplitude of the phaser is small. In this case, a small amount of sensor noise might lead to a large amount of noise in the phase measurements. Second, in practice, continuous wave time of flight sensors integrate multiple light paths from potentially many points along a ray. For example, when a scene contains partially transparent surfaces, a pixel will receive light from multiple points in a scene. As a result, the phase becomes biased and will no longer be proportional to depth. Finally, for large scenes, the phase will wrap around 2 pi and return to zero. As a result, Two objects at different distances can produce the same phase, resulting in an ambiguous relationship between phase and depth. Turf avoids problems with time of flight depth by construction. As input, we take monocular RGB and phaser videos. Then, our goal is to recover a dynamic radiance field from these inputs using the color and phaser physically based image formation models that we described earlier. We optimize this dynamic radiance field by comparing the predicted images to the input via a weighted L2 reconstruction loss. Given enough measurements, we can recover an accurate dynamic volume. This form lets us reduce three error cases. First, modeling phasers helps handle low reflectance noise. Our L2 loss in phaser space is automatically smaller for depths from low reflectance phasers. This acts as a kind of confidence applied to the time of flight depth estimates and lets us fall back on triangulation in these cases. Second, we never explicitly penalize depth derived from time of flight. As such, density can be placed at multiple points along a ray, so long as their phasor sum matches the measurements. This allows us to model and recover geometry that produces multipath interference. Third, we share density between time of flight and RGB volumes. This resolves phase wrapping errors by leveraging triangulation because only one phase offset is consistent in depth with the triangulated solution. We represent a dynamic radiance field as a linear combination of a network that captures static content and a time-dependent network that represents dynamic content. 
both the static and dynamic networks, model RGB intensity, and time of flight reflectance. A learn blending weight is used to blend between the static and dynamic networks at every time step. Together, this allows for novel view synthesis for any time step. Often, erroneous camera calibration from structure from motion can cause problems for dynamic scenes. Instead, we optimize for camera poses from scratch during training. Without time of flight information, this problem by itself is challenging, but our approach provides this at almost no cost. Note the smoother camera trajectory for our recovered poses versus Colmap's recovered poses. Here, we compare turf to dynamic view synthesis methods that use data driven deep priors. Video nerf is a method that uses a depth loss in addition to a color loss for each frame. Neural scene flow fields, or NSFF, uses both depth and flow consistency losses in order to better constrain geometry in motion. Turf significantly improves calibration for our test sequences and produces more plausible view synthesis results. We also modify these dynamic view synthesis methods to use depth derived directly from a continuous wave time of flight camera. We are better able to recover the geometry for static, low reflectance regions than these modified baselines. Compare, for example, the depth of the dark monitor produced by turf and the depth produced by the baseline method. Furthermore, our method successfully unwraps phase for faraway objects and scenes with large depth ranges, while baseline methods fail to do so. Observe the incorrect disparity for the far wall on the right side of the sequence. Finally, as we model multipath interference, we can recover multiple surfaces that produce these measurements. See, for example, the reflections on the glass of the booth. We also perform quantitative evaluation on ground truth sequences generated using a synthetic time of flight path tracer. We provide baseline video nerf and NSFF approaches with depth derived from time of flight, in which phase wrapping errors have been manually corrected. Otherwise, the errors are much larger. For depth accuracy, our mean squared error metric is lower. For RGB metrics, each of PSNR, SSIM, and LPIPS is also better. Our method is not without limitations. In particular, low reflectance dynamic regions remain difficult to recover, even with data from a time of flight camera. Further, for disoccluded regions of the scene that are not observed in any of the input images, we fail to produce plausible view synthesis results sometimes leading to minor ghosting artifacts. As a final result, our method can be applied to already processed depth measurements. Here, we use the iPhone. Even though the raw time of flight measurements are not available, we convert depth back to a phaser representation for reconstruction. This helps to refine depth and reduce some of the larger flickering artifacts, though the method would improve given access to the time of flight images. In summary, Turf improves dynamic scene view synthesis by leveraging time of flight data in a physically based image formation model. It helps resolve common error modes in time of flight depth and so outperforms baselines that use deep priors for geometry and motion. Please visit our webpage to find the source code and data. Bye bye.